Hello, this is SGD and for today on the School of Granite Drilling. Let's look at the archaeological record from Egypt and Gardner's sign list where we see stone workers drill weighted at the top with stones and we also see another form. So whether it's in Thebes from the tomb of Rekmire but going way, way back to the Mustaba, uh, Mustabas at Saqqara, we see this form of top heavy weighted drill with that offset curved handle. Uh, well, it's a stone mason's drill, but we can also see, f for instance, evidence here, but what we have is the boring tool at the bottom to hollow out vases. Now, if we look at uh, some d examples of this tool in use here, and here we'll see them, and it's a particular way in these ex examples how they're holding it. For the sources, um, you can look up experiments in ancient, experiments in Egyptian archaeology by Dennis A. Stocks. I'll link that. Uh, PDF in the description, but uh, here we see two uh, and a new example. So on the bottom we see the tomb of Rekmire where we see a stone vase workshop. Different shapes, different forms, longer and narrower, wider bowl forms as well, but we see the way that they're operating these particular type of drills and we can focus in and compare the two different forms. Here we see two of those versions closer up. Now on the left hand side, notice that he's operating the tool in a particular way, again a top heavy drill, but the way he's holding the handle as opposed to the one on the right, where again we have a weighted top heavy drill, but the, the operation, the, the way that he's holding the handle and also how he's holding the weight, we'll see that in a moment, but he's beginning to spin the drill and we'll show working examples of that. But now for the moment let's listen to Dennis Stocks and his interpretation of these pictures and come back to it in a moment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this drill first. Now this is a reconstruction, and you'll recognize it straight away now, from the drawings that we've seen. I've decided to use the single stone on this one because it's easiest to work with. But I did mention the name of this, I've named it the twist, reverse twist drill. The reason is that was carved definitely for the human hand to hold it, not to rotate it. If you do, you will severely taper the core and you will severely make the taper very pronounced. So briefly returning back to this picture where we see the stonemason's drill being used to create to core out, bore out these vases and we can be sure they're stone because y you don't do this with pottery. So we see all those thousands of examples of stone vases in different shapes and we see the different shapes and sizes here amongst these uh, uh, depictions from Egypt itself. But again, clearly they're stone because obviously they're not pottery to be using a tool such as this. There are no marks found in th this old pottery. But the form, the way that it's used, uh, Dennis Stock's interpretation, and I believe the big, bake, uh, the big breakthrough in using this very efficiently comes from the Scientists Against Smith channel. But let's just briefly return to Dennis Stock's. Well, imagine a tree branch. They fork. So if you cut the fork off and then smooth that out, because the branch you're using tapers naturally you can now put your hand on it because it fits the human hand because when it's shut you can see the shape of the human hand fits that perfect and then the other hand will grip there so now you have the tool but if you're going to make it now to use it on a stone borer I mean you could be all over here and over there and over there and over there it will be it's like driving a motor car you're on the right or the left hand side driving it, but you've got to allow for the vehicle being off center to your line of vision. So there we are. Now you can see that I can do this quite quickly. And away we go. And if you keep doing that, you'll go right through the center of the earth. <laughs> well, you might. So you can see it's just something. They'll be talking about something because they probably did it in groups of workers. And they'll probably be talking about the local football result. What do you think of Blackpool? Mm. 
<laughs> rubbish. Sorry about that, by the way. So you can see that's enough of that. Um, you can get the idea straight away. Thanks very much for your help. But again, if I pour that out, oops, here we go. You can see it's turned into this grey powder again, quite quickly. This is the video of making Egyptian drill holes, lost ancient high technology by the scientists against Myth Channel who have done many experiments, provided many examples and have replicated all the tapering and all sorts of other marks as well. But what we see here is uh, someone who's proficient in using this tool. Very efficient, in fact. And we'll have a look at the master compared to the apprentice in the moment. But this drill, yeah, very efficient, uh, very high RPM, very high cutting rate. But here we see a uh, the apprentice, someone who is new to that technique and hasn't mastered it. I had to overcome this myself and learn how to use it. But notice how he's holding the drill to begin spinning and also this other fella has come along and he's new to it and he holds it in the same way as where we see the master um, of the technique uh, doing it. So once you become early on you have to hold it and spin it sort of with both hands to get the technique going but once you're proficient with using the tool um, you get a very high RPM, very efficient cutting tool as well so yeah, the uh, RPM is I get at least 300, I can do up to 400 RPM, which is recommended by modern um, granite drilling uh, companies as well. So just to review, here we see the, the noob who's new to it has to learn you know, the technique. And there we see comparison of the illustration of the apprentice learning the boring technique or the drilling technique, because for boring out or for drilling. And yeah, just a freeze frame comparison so we compare this photo uh, and then the technique. So let's look again at Nikolai. And once you're good at it, you just, you know, you set it spinning and then you just keep it going. And now we freeze frame it. Notice how to begin the drill and compare that to the image as well. So we see the master beginning the process. C hugely increases your proficiency. Now, the Dennis Stock's interpretation of that, I'm not saying it's wrong, I believe we'll see an example of why it's valuable, but uh, why would you have that extra long hand handle if that was not in use? So if it was just being used the way that Dennis Stock's uh, shows it, then why always this extra long handle in all of the depictions? This would be completely unnecessary, it would actually get in the way. So the handle would be much shorter if it was only used in that way. However, it still can be used as a way described by Dennis Stocks. If you look back again at those stonemason's drills as depicted in Thebes, the Saqqara Mastaba, also in hieroglyphs. And now we look at the attachment on the bottom and what we don't see is a tubular drill. What we see is a coring tool. And next example, just a, a comparison. So. We do find this hieroglyph going back to the very early dynastic period, to the you know, earliest hieroglyphs and the boring tool attachment. So it's not just good for drilling, but it's also good for boring out and hollowing out the vase. Now this is uh, the video making a stone vase with primitive tools, also depicted, uh, also posted by the scientists against Myth Channel. And there we see the sculptress creating this boring tool. So she's going to hollow out her vase. However, she does not attach uh, the flywheel drill to the top. She does it manually and turns it by hand, very much in the same uh, vein as described by Dennis Stocks. Now we see him you know, turning, twisting the drill back and forth to bore that out. So this can be used as that and for finer work and to get the last details, the last f fractions of a millimetre to make it very, very nice. Uh, that is uh, effective, but the more efficient way, so for her, I believe, to um, make her vase making to take less than uh, what it does at the moment was, would be to attach that boring tool and use a drill such as this. Now, in the full video, Making a Stone Vase with Primitive Tools, you see that she does use other forms, or like a push-pull drill, but here I believe, uh, firstly, that the scientists against Smith making stone vases She's currently making a diorite vase as well, um, but also I believe that here they've 
crack the code on how to properly use this tool, not in the noobish apprentice way, but in the very efficient, masterful way of doing it.